Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday. And what we're going to cover today is how to use the Google Places API inside of your React app. To do that, we're going to be using the React Places autocomplete package. And this is just a nice package to sort of help build um, the, the input. And as you type, it shows all the suggestions. And as you select one, it goes and grabs the coordinates for that suggestion. And it sort of just makes that a lot easier to work with than if we were going and using the Google JavaScript API directly. So what we've got is a Create React app that's just rendering out Google Places right now. So if I load up this app, it's literally just got this. I've got some imports at the top um, where I'm importing a couple packages from the this React Places autocomplete um, package that we're using. And let's get going. So inside of this div that renders um, right now just what does it say, Google Places? This is where we're going to use the Places Autocomplete component. So I'll just put that in here, like that. Okay, so this component, we need to pass a few different props to. Uh, the first one is value. Uh, there's gonna be an input inside of here, and this is the current value of whatever the user's typing into that input. And we'll fill it in in a second. Um, the next one is on change. So this is a function that should be called every time that input value changes to update the state. And then we've got another one called on select, which is called when the user selects one of the suggestions that we display to them. So we obviously need to fill in these values here. And the first one value, this will be some state that we'll create and we can call it the address. So const address and set address equals react.useState. And we'll start this out as an empty string. So with this state set up, we can just uh, place that value there and then this function into onChange. And we're not gonna fill out this function yet, but we'll at least define it. So we'll say, so const, we'll call it handle select, and it's gonna be an async function and what this function receives, it's going to be the address of the suggestion that they have selected. Um, we'll just call this value for now, so it's the value of whatever they, they select. So now I can copy this handle select down here. So before we get going, I need to mention that inside of the index.html file, you're going to need a script tag. And this loads sort of all of the different Google libraries that are needed by the underlying um, package that we're using to help handle this. And you do have your API key here. So this is going to be publicly available on your website. Um, it's a requirement of Google. So one thing you can do is go into your Google API console and limit it to the domain of the website you're deploying this to so that people can't copy this API and start using it on their own website. Okay, so if I load the page, I believe I get a, a big error on the screen. And that's because this place's autocomplete component, uh, as its child, it wants a render prop function. So we'll embed here a function. This is our render prop function. And its goal will be to return, um, for now, we'll just do a div. Hey, like that. Okay, so it's at least working now, right? So what does this render prop function receive? It's going to receive a whole bunch of props that are a little bit hard for me to remember. So we're going to pop over here to their example. I'm just gonna paste them and then I'll explain what they do. That will save me suffering trying to remember all of these things. So get input props, this is a function that we can call as we're building the input. So we'll just put this input here and we will embed and we're going to pass the props returned from get input props like that. And we can pass additional props that we want to have attached to this input. So here we could do, what do we want? Um, maybe a placeholder. Uh, Type, address, something like that. Cool. So now we have this input being rendered to the screen. 
So what we're going to do next is we're going to have a div and this is where we we're going to display all of the suggestions that come back um, as we start typing stuff in. So inside of this div, maybe the first thing we can do is we can actually just show whether it's currently loading or not. So for that, we can just say, um, if loading, we can have a div that just says dot 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 loading. Else nothing. So I don't think it should be loading. That's good. Okay, just format this a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got this div where we're going to be showing the suggestions, it's an array of objects, so we want to map them. So we'll suggestions.map, and then we pass our map function inside of here. And what this will receive is the suggestion. And now inside of this, we have to um, render, we'll do it as a div. It is returned. And for now, we'll get a little bit more fancy, but let's just say suggestion dot uh, description. That's one of the values we have available to us for each of the suggestions. So if this starts working, I can start typing Toronto and it's going to show me the suggestions. So we're starting to get it linked up together. Now there's a few other, one other prop I haven't used called get suggestion item props. So what is this? This is, are some props that we need to pass to this div that's rendering each suggestion because this library sort of, as I type it, if I were to like select one of them, uh, it needs to have some props attached to that div so it can handle like the, su the, the selection of the suggestion. So sort of same thing we did up here with this input. We're gonna say dot, 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 uh, what's it called? Get suggestion item props. So this is something we can pass in an object if we want additional sort of things attached to this div that we're rendering. So why don't we do one just for fun? Let's do a style. And for the style, we will do the background color. And we can change the background color if the suggestion is, I think it's called active. Um, we'll try it out. So if the suggestion is active, we'll do one background color, otherwise we'll do a different one. So let's just go get some colors from this color drop website. So what's, what's a nice one? Well, it doesn't need to be nice, whatever. This one's cool. Okay, so we've got a color and that will be our active color. Otherwise, it's going to be white. So now we can pass style in as one of the uh, props that will be added to this div that's being rendered. So now if I start typing Toronto, it's not active. What is it? It is active. Hmm. Oh. I see what's up. I see what's up. So I foolishly passed it as the first, this object of props to attach here, but we actually have to pass it the suggestion as the first thing. And then the second um, argument being passed to this function will be the additional props that we want to attach to this div that renders each of the suggestions. All right, let's try this again. I type Toronto, still doesn't work because that's amazing. Mm. All right, why don't we do a couple things? Let's log the, each suggestion so we can see what's going on. So it is doing this. And some of them have true, so what am I doing wrong? Oh no, I am s oh boy. 
Cool. So we've, just to take a step back, because that was ridiculous, we're mapping the suggestions to show them to the user. So we've got each suggestion. We're going to customize how it's displayed based on whether it's active or not. So the user can use sort of their, their keyboard to highlight them or uh, their mouse cursor. And here we're just going to modify the style each one, looking at the active one and setting the background color accordingly. So as we actually go to render each suggestion, we need to pass in some props, which are generated by this get suggestion item props function. And the first thing we need to pass in is the suggestion that we're trying to um, generate props for. And the second one is the um, sort of any additional props that we want to attach to this element being rendered. So now that we've got that working, we can type Toronto and select one. And what happens next? So now is when we have to come back and implement this handle select function that we've sort of left. And the first thing we're going to do is just create um, some state. So coordinates and set coordinates, react.useState, which will be an object. So what this object has is the latitude, which can just be null at the start, and LNG for longitude, which will also be null. And what we can do is, just to display what's happening, we'll have one paragraph here where we show the latitude. So it's this coordinates dot lat, and then we'll do the same thing for the longitude. Longarood, LNG. Okay, so they've got nothing yet. It's time to start filling them in. So handle select. So this is where we use these two helper functions that we imported from the React Places autocomplete um, package. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get some results for whatever value the user has selected. And we're going to use the geocode by address, geocode by address function, where we'll pass it this address string value to it. And what we'll get back so first of all, this is asynchronous. Let's just take a look at the, um, what the results look like. So if I type Toronto and then select it, here we have an array of the results that have come back. So there's just one in here and it's got a whole bunch of different information. Uh, address components, sort of broken down Toronto into I don't know what province it is in, what country. We've got the geometry, which has location, which has latitude, which is a function. So you can see it's a little bit hard to access the data in here, even though it's available. And that's where we've got this other function, get lat long, which we can basically pass the first result to it, and it will give us something a little bit nicer to deal with back. So we'll say const. Um, we'll, it gives us back the latitude and longitude, so we'll call that get lat long, passing it the first result. And why don't we console.log that now so we can see what it looks like. Cool, so this is in the same shape that we've defined our coordinate state as, where it's got lat and lng as its two attributes in the object. So now all we need to do is set our state to have that value. So set coordinates lat long. And one other thing that I like to do is call set address to actually set the address to the one they've selected, not just necessarily what they've typed so far. That's because they might have typed Toro instead of Toronto. And we want to actually fill in the Toronto, the full value rather than what they've typed so far. So we'll just pass that value in here as well. And let's try her out. So as I type Toronto, it shows me my suggestions. It highlights the one that's active. And as I select it, we get the latitude and the longitude filled in. And how that happened is um, the value is what they've entered so far. Every time it changes, it calls the set address function to set the state. And then handle select is what gets called when the user actually selects one. 
So this function receives the string of what they have selected, and then we use two helper functions provided by the package to convert that string value using the Google Places API into an array of results, and then we can access the first result and get the coordinates back from that, the latitude and longitude, and then we can update our state so we can show to the user what they've selected. And just to demo that one more time, we type Toronto, we select one, and then, well, it's the same coordinates. So let's do something else. Where's a place? Um, Buffalo. Cool, latitude and longitude is updated. So that's how you use the Google Places API in your React app to allow the user to type an address, get some suggestions, and then on the selected suggestion, grab the coordinates from that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, take care.